This video covers the textbook section entitled Numbers with Significance. Periodically through this video, I will ask you to hit the pause button so you have the opportunity to work through a problem before the answer is presented to you. Let's start out by looking at the following four scenarios and determining what number is the correct one. Take a moment and pause the video and jot down your ideas before proceeding. If we take a closer look at the first scenario, we have a graduated cylinder that we're told is accurate to the nearest milliliter. So this answer would be accurate because it is rounded to the nearest milliliter. The second scenario is we have a ruler that is accurate to the tenth of a centimeter. So when we look at the value that's reported, 15.368 centimeters, we can tell that that is not accurate because it's not recorded to the tenth of a centimeter. When we look at the third scenario, we are looking at the order of operation of adding two values together that were both recorded properly, so each device had a different degree of accuracy. So let's say we had a balance that measured to one-tenth of a gram, where another was able to measure to one one-thousandth of a gram you should still add these together as they are and then at the end you want to round to the nearest tenth because that is the most accurate reading we can have. The fourth scenario is a multiplication order of operation where you are multiplying 2.5 centimeters and 6.799 centimeters. You would still solve this one and you can record all the decimal places that are included. However, we can only be accurate to the same number of significant figures as the smallest value. So in that case, our 2.5 centimeters has two significant figures, where the 6.799 centimeters has four. So our answer should be rounded to two significant figures. So we would change this answer to 17 centimeters squared. As we practice the scenarios today, you'll be able to understand why we do these things. Let's take a moment to review this section's objectives. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to determine which numbers in a value are significant, you should be able to report the correct number of significant figures when taking measurements and performing calculations, and you should be able to properly round numbers when necessary. We are going to learn about reporting the proper value of a measurement, including measurements that require some calculations. You will take many measurements during your careers, and not all the numbers you originally record should be presented as part of your final answer. It is critical that you know how to report values that you are confident in based on the accuracy of the measuring tool. Let's start with our first scenario. Take a moment to read the scenario and answer it on your own. When you are thinking about significant figures, think about how many numbers you are confident in to find out how many there actually are. Write in your notes how many significant figures there are in this reading and see if you convert it into scientific notation. Pause the video now and resume when you're ready. We see that when a reading is taken from an instrument, we know to be accurate to a certain degree. All of the numbers given are significant to the accuracy of that instrument. The balance in this scenario was accurate to one one hundredth of a gram or two decimal places. So all of the numbers up to the second decimal place are significant. That would indicate that we have five significant figures in this number. And when you write that number in scientific notation, you are going to change the way that it is displayed. Scientific notation we will move the decimal place so that way our reported value is between 1 and 10 multiplied by 10 raised to whatever power to let you know where you need to move your decimal. So since all five numbers in this are significant, 
our scientific notation should be written as 3.2903 times 10 raised to the second power grams. So don't forget your grams. The other thing I want to make sure you're aware of is that all non-zero numbers are considered to be significant. And if you have a zero in between two non-zero numbers, that zero would also be considered significant. Let's move on to our second case. You dropped a hammer on your toe last week and the nail just fell off. And being the inquisitive people that we are, you are wondering how much mass that nail has. So you take it to school and use a good balance that is accurate to one one thousandth or three decimal places. You zero or tear the machine and balance and then you put your nail on the balance you get a reading of 0 0.098. Take a moment to determine how many significant figures this number has and write the number in scientific notation. Pause the video and proceed when you have done this. This value only has two significant figures. The zeros before the nine are not significant even though we are confident in them being zeros, they never changed. Perhaps you can see this when we write it in scientific notation. 9.8 times 10 to the negative 2. The values in front of the multiplication symbol indicate the number of significant figures we have. Therefore, we have two significant figures. Let's try a third scenario. In a freak accident while moving, one of your classmates dropped a bowling ball on his toe last week and his toenail fe also fell off. Being the curious minds that we are, you can't help wonder, but wonder which toenail will have more mass, his or yours. His toenail, after you tear the scale, ends up reading 0 0.090 grams. How many significant figure figures are there in this reading? Try writing this number in scientific notation. All right. The value when you write it in scientific notation is 9.0 times 10 raised to the negative 2 grams. Since the last zero was within the accuracy of the balance and it was part of the reading, it becomes a significant figure. This means that there are two significant figures in the number and why we would report it as 9.0 raised to 9.0 times 10 raised to the negative 2 grams. Please don't forget that you always need to include your measurements or your units. So far, we've been looking at very small numbers, but let's look at a really big number. The nearest star to Earth beside our own sun is 25,284,000,000,000 miles away. I want you to take a moment and determine the number of significant figures in this distance and try writing it in scientific notation. Pause the video and proceed when you are ready. Even though you can see that there are nine zeros, those are called trailing zeros, there are only five significant figures in this number. We cannot, again, be certain about the trailing zeros, and therefore they, are, they will not be written when we convert this to scientific notation. Scientific notation would be written as 2.5284 times 10 to the 13th miles. That means that we only have five significant figures. Now, if there were trailing zeros, but then there was a decimal point all the way at the end of this, that decimal point would be the indicator that all of the numbers before it are significant. For example, if you had 34,000.0, it would have five significant figures because there's a decimal at the end we measured those zeros and the value just happened to have a few zeros in it. So we would take that 34,000 point zero 
and convert it into 3.4000 times 10 raised to the power of 4 in our scientific notation. So hopefully you're starting to get the hang of this. Let's switch gears and do another scenario where we are combining samples. You have two samples you want to add together. And in this scenario, we're taking two samples of urine from a single patient, and we want to know the total amount of urine that was collected from this patient. The first sample has six significant figures, and the second sample only has four significant figures. But how many significant figures should your answer have? Or should we be looking at significant figures? And if you change the number of significant figures, do we have to round our final answer? Take a moment and think, how would you approach this question? Take a moment, pause the video, and proceed when you're ready. In this case, it is not the total number of significant figures that is important. Rather, it is important how many significant figures are to the right of the decimal place. We should always do the calculations first and as a final step, round our answer when necessary. We see that when we add the two measurements, we're only concerned where the last significant figure is on each. And the first sample, there are three significant figures to the right of the decimal, to the thousandths place. In the second sample, the measurement is accurate to only two places to the right of the decimal or to the hundredths place. Since the least accurate measurement is only accurate to the hundredths position, our final answer can only be reported to the hundredths place. So we would combine the terms to get 424.747 milliliters. Now comes the tricky part. We know that we can only have two significant figures to the right of the decimal, so should we, we report 427.74 milliliters, or should we report 427.75 milliliters? Because the number just after the last place <clears throat> that we need for our answer is five or above, we round that last significant figure up. So our final answer should be 427.75 milliliters. All right, let's try another scenario. We're trying to find the area of a rectangle. You are in charge of recording side A. Your partner is in charge of recording side B. Side A measures 23.41 centimeters, and side B measures 26.7 centimeters. How can we figure out what our result should be? Take a moment and try to solve this on your own. When you are ready, resume the video. All right, so multiplication is different from addition, where in addition, we're only concerned with the number of significant figures to the right of the decimal. In multiplication, it's the total number of significant figures that is important. And the answer cannot have more significant figures than the weakest input value. Side A is 23.41 centimeters. That means it has four significant figures. Side B, 26.7 centimeters, only has three significant figures. So when we report our final answer, we can only have three significant figures that we're confident in. Our answer can only be as strong as the weakest link. First, you multiply, and as a final step is when you do the rounding. So 23.41 centimeters times 26.7 centimeters gives us a value of 625.047 centimeters. Well, since we can only report three significant figures, we would round our value up to 625 centimeters squared. Now that we have looked at all of our scenarios, 
we have seen that significant figures are very important to properly recording values. We only should report values that we are confident about. In your future careers, you will be expected to have a solid understanding of significant figures and scientific notation, and your final values must be in the correct form. Today, we learned that not all numbers are necessarily significant, but there are a couple rules of thumb. All non-zero numbers are significant, and that zeros between non-zero numbers are significant. Trailing zeros are not. This is especially important to know when writing numbers in scientific notation. We also learned that when we are adding or subtracting numbers, we focus on the smallest place value of the numbers. But when multiplying numbers, we look at the total number of significant figures. These rules are logical. They keep us from reporting a value with more accuracy than the weakest input value and help us only report the numbers that we are confident about. So now, you should be able to determine which numbers in a value are significant. You should be able to report the correct number of significant figures when taking measurements and performing your calculations. And lastly, you should properly be able to round numbers when necessary. Now see how you are doing. Write a number with at least eight significant figures, then round that number to only five significant fi figures. As you review this material, make notes directly in the text, underline and highlight important parts, take notes in the margins of your papers, and write any comments or questions you may have. As you're studying, additional strategies you can use, may you may want to try using flashcards, or creating possible test questions to quiz members of your class or yourself. You should also be answering section review questions and revisit any prior sections to keep this information fresh in your mind. If you have any questions, make sure you reach out to your professor.